Hello everyone and welcome. In today's video I'm going to talk to you about Be Bright or BB Bright or Cervelo's bottom bracket standard. Now I'll talk to you about the history, where it came from, some of the issues around creaking, dimensional tolerances and uh, how to fix Shimano cranks. So what I've done here is I've lined up my three dummy bottom brackets. We've got BB30 here, PF30 here and Be Bright here. BB30 uses bearings directly into the bottom bracket shell. PF30 uses a cup that goes into the bottom bracket shell which locates the bearings. And this one which is a push fit variant of B Bright again uses cups that push into the bottom bracket shell. Now the reason why I've lined them all up is to illustrate a point. The drive side on all of these bottom brackets locates at the same place. Basically the center lines are the same. The difference is on the uh, B Bright bottom bracket it's 11 millimeters wider than these two. So these are 68 millimeters wide, this one is 79 millimeters wide and that extra 11 millimeters is only on the non-drive side. Now B Bright PF30 or B Bright Push Fit uses the same tolerances as standard SRAM PF30. So this hole here it's nominally 46 millimeters wide, it's actually slightly under, uh, and the same on the other side, the cups are the same. The B Bright Direct Fit uses the same tolerances as just standard BB30, so it will be a 42 mil hole, or just slightly under, and again, bearings push in with a smally snap ring. Now, if we were to look at weights for a standard uh, PF type system, which is the ones that are commonly available, it's two cups and a couple of bearings, so the weight is around 65 grams, so they're ceramic bearings, delring cups. With aluminium, the, uh, the cup weight will be slightly higher, so 33 grams. 66 grams just for the cups and if you have a center sleeve 83 grams plus whatever weight of bearings you use if you use ceramic bearings they're typically a bit lighter than uh, steel bearings now we come on to the thorny subject of the advantages and disadvantages of yet another bottom bracket standard now I have personal uh, experience with the uh, Cervelo standard because my bike over there the S5 has it, and I've owned that bike for a few years now. The biggest problem with it is creak. It is absolutely renowned for creaking. Whether you look on Weight Weenies or the Cervelo Forum, whatever, it creaks. And the reason for that is extremely trivial, but nonetheless needs to be talked about. And that's to do with, if this is the dummy bottom bracket, this surface here. Now the Cervelo painting process means that once they finish painting there, it's uneven. When you slide the cup in, the cup is actually at a slight angle. And that causes creak because it's not flush mounted against anything. The way to fix that is to basically ream a small hole or file it flat, machine it flat, and then push that in. In terms of other things associated with the um, with the standard itself, Cervelo's manufacturing tolerances are fairly good, so the hole diameter and the bottom bracket shell width are pretty much bang on, so it doesn't usually creak for that reason. And the alignment between the drive side and the non-drive side, again, um, Cervelo, I think, use one drilling motion from one side straight through to the other. However, some people still have creak. Now, what causes the creak? Same thing as everything else, really and that is an improper fit or improper alignment between the drive side, non-drive side, and the ball bearings themselves. One of the ways to alleviate the creak is to start off with the ball bearings themselves. Um, make sure you get quality bearings, and when you put the bearings in, use retaining compound, but then go the whole hog and also use activator, because the metal to carbon or metal to plastic um, adhesion is not very good just with retaining compound. The activator makes it much, much better. 
The other, other thing is uh, alignment from left to right. Again, that could be an issue, and if it is, a one-piece bottom bracket will sort that problem out. Most of the time, that is not a problem. Then we come on to the next part of the equation, which is what are the actual advantages and disadvantages mechanically? Well, for a BB30 system or a PF30 system, the biomechanical advantage is you can have greater ankle clearance, so your ankles can um, rotate inwards towards the uh, crankshaft and you won't hit them. With, uh, with B-Bright, you cannot do that and the reason for that is because on the non-drive side is effectively the same width as a standard Shimano setup. So you would have to run asymmetric cranks effectively. The other thing mechanically is the non-drive side is basically stiffer because there's more material around it. The drive side is not because there's nothing around it, it's the same as a PB30 or PF30 so you're reliant on the rest of the bottom bracket to give you your stiffness. Now crank compatibility with B-Bright is a bit of a, a problem, I would say. There is only one company I know that makes a totally specific B-Bright specific crank, and that's Rotor. Now the Rotor uh, crank is effectively a BB30 or PF30 crank with a spacer on one side and no spacer on the non-drive side. I don't really know why Cervelo engineered this bottom bracket because it's a halfway house and I don't think it has the advantages of either standard. For me, I don't have an ankle clearance problem, I will go with a full width and make it you know, 90 millimeters wide and use 30 millimeters bearings. I don't know why they've just gone to this asymmetric standard unless there's some sort of clearance issue. So if you were to use B-Bright as Cervelo intended um, using the PF system which is what they've had on most of their frames for a long time you'd have cups with bearings on either side and you would squeeze them in. So that's it installed. Some bearings that side bearing that side, free to rotate, 30mm nominal axle. Now to fit the Shimano crank you've got uh, two options basically. You can use these adapters, now they're asymmetric so the non-drive side has a thinner adapter which will just slide in there, if I can get it in. and the drive side would have a slightly bigger adapter to make up the rest of the 11mm. Like that. So that's method one, it's the easiest one and it's very simple, straightforward. The other option is you could actually change the bottom bracket. Now this is one I made. Now for Cervelo I would always advocate the use of a one-piece bottom bracket. It's much much more effective than a two-piece or three-piece bottom bracket. Um, so this it just slides in from one direction and it keeps the um, uh, spacing at 79 mil or 90 millimeters, 79 millimeters across the landings, and then you're away. So that concludes this video on the Cervelo B Bright bottom bracket or BB Right bottom bracket. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, please subscribe to my channel and visit my website www.hambini.com and until next time.